Sometimes I hear people say that armed robbers aren't looking to hurt anyone, and quite frankly, that's simply not true. Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today, we have three different armed robberies, all from Houston, Texas. Ammo is crazy expensive and hard to find, and dry fire is life. I use the Mantis X10 to keep my handgun skills strong, and it makes dry practice fun and challenging. Check it out at the link below. The first one here, this guy walks in with a tire iron in his right hand and threatens a clerk and tells him, hey man, I want the money out of the till. You can see that tire iron in his right hand. The clerk's like, okay man, no problem, whatever. And he opens the till for him and you're gonna watch this guy then start grabbing money out of the till. They're, they're gonna you know, get in on him a little bit so you can see his face a little bit better, though of course with the mask, it's not gonna be great. So he's gonna grab all of the money out of the till. We're gonna see some interesting stuff about that in our lessons learned, so make sure you stick around for those. And then he is going to then look under the till and then talk one last time at the guy and wander off. This next one's interesting. This guy comes in, tries to buy a beer, but it's too early in the morning by state law. It has to be seven o'clock. And so the clerk says, you can't buy a beer right now. And so he, he does that and the guy ends up attacking the clerk. Now the clerk was trying to stop him because he was gonna steal the beer, I think. And then that guy knocked him down and kicks him multiple times in the face here. Several times, you can see the guy is completely out. He's got that, that you know, kind of knocked out posture in his body there. And you can see now the guy is behind the counter and you can see there were other, uh, you know, customers who came and went in that interim. So now he's just decided, oh, okay, well, I may as well rob the joint while I'm here because I can't have the beer. Now, if you go read the news story and check the original, this guy had tried to uh, carjack a car in the lot a week before or something. And that's why the clerk really knew who he was. He's gonna get another kick in there and then walk out the door on him. Our third robbery here. Guy walks in and in his left hand right now, he's gonna switch it to his right hand. He has a stun gun, not a taser, he has a stun gun. You know, that electrical device that makes that big crackling noise and hurts when you put it on somebody. And he's gonna attack the clerks with that stun gun and then start grabbing stuff and looking for money. And they're gonna point out, oh, okay, here's what you got, whatever. And he's gonna zap them a few more times and scare him and then they're gonna open the till and he's gonna grab a bunch of stuff and run off with it, uh, you know, a bunch of things and some money, pick up his stuff and run off. These three all have lessons, so stick around and let's learn them. Oh, this one's make my blood boil, man. If you wanna work on your skill set, not just your mindset, we work on mindset here on the main Ask channel. If you wanna work on your skill set, join us on our second channel, Active Self Protection Extra, would ya? It is a channel we post seven days a week there to help you have a skill set to better defend yourself. So join us there, link in the description. First things first, is a tire iron a deadly threat? You gotta uh, see the fact that this guy has a fairly short weapon here in this tire iron. The answer to that is unequivocally yes. You hit somebody with a tire iron, is it likely to do great bodily harm or kill somebody? Yes, of course it is. So you certainly could use a deadly force in response if you are so armed yourself. Though, of course, you don't have to and, and all those things. But it absolutely is a deadly threat here to threaten somebody with a tire iron that you're gonna hurt them if they don't give you the money out of the till. That said, the clerk doesn't have that. And so he's just like, look, man, it's not my money. You can take it. And that's a perfectly acceptable answer to say, hey, look, it's not my money. Take what you want. I'm not gonna fight you or whatever. That's fine. One of the things I do want you to pay attention to here, though, is that the robber has shifted the tire iron from his right hand where he would probably use it to holding it in his left hand where he is stuffing a bunch of money. So that tire iron is now not immediately deliverable. So this is your opportunity for a counter ambush if you want one. If you wanted a counter ambush, now is the time. If that clerk is armed, take a big step back, get the gun out and, and go to work on that guy. If he's not, but he wants to stop him right now, grabbing a hold of that and practicing the five Ds plus one on the tire iron is an effective way as well. But again, you don't have to do that. You can comply. That is a strategy that sometimes works, quite often works actually. Uh, you know, but isn't 100% for sure. Did work in this case, you know, I don't know what the guy said to him or whatever, but he took the money and ran off. And of course that's morally reprehensible, but whatever. Now, next one, this guy has priors. He's got a history here and the clerk knows who he is. So that really says something to us. He wants to buy a beer and he's like, no, you can't buy a beer because it's too early. So the guy's throwing stuff around or whatever. And that's what you saw there is he kind of threw some things around and made a mess. And so the clerk goes after him. Friends, I can't tell you enough, don't provoke fights. And the reason that you don't wanna provoke fights like this guy's moving in on him like that is because it can end up getting you very badly hurt. Somebody wants to toss the joint or whatever, call the cops, let them deal with the guy. Don't end up getting in these kinds of conflicts unless you have a very high level of skill and you don't mind the potential of getting hurt, which I don't think that's good risk management. Now watch this, he gets him with this first one, turns around and hits him with a forearm. I don't think he meant to do that on purpose. I will say this is a kind of a standing striking version of the fight. So again, standing striking skills 
are an important part, whether that's Western boxing or some kind of striking martial art, something like that, Muay Thai, somewhere in that ballpark, uh, you know, whatever art you're going to study, but have that part. And then we also are going to see here the standing grappling section with this. We see this quite frequently that fights close like this and guys grapple like this in a standing grappling fight. So this is a different phase than the standing striking fight. It's not just standing and, and on the ground. There is a standing striking, a standing dirty boxing, and a standing grappling fight. So those are all phases that you want to really kind of think through in your training. Whatever training that it is you're doing empty-handed, you want it to include all of those. Certainly, of course, you want to think about ground fight training as well. That last bit here, you're going to see him knock our victim over, get him on the ground, and then kick him in the face. And of course, having that grounded skills to be able to protect your head and neck, very important. Also here, of course, I want to say, when you kick somebody with a shod foot like this in the face, that is aggravated assault that is highly likely to cause death or great bodily harm. Put somebody in the hospital for sure. You kick somebody with a foot with a shoe on it, very likely to put them in the hospital. That raises this to aggravated assault, raises this to deadly force, raises this to an encounter. But think about it from the guy on the ground. If he had a gun on him, would he be able to do anything with it? No, because the guy is just absolutely stomping him into a mud puddle so he doesn't have the ability to get to the gun. This is important for us to think about as self-defenders. Even if you carry a gun, have some empty-handed skills. Now, I do want to think a moment about this guy up here, that we know that, that our clerk is laying on the ground and hurt badly, and this guy's robbing the joint or whatever. And, and I'm not going to give this guy too hard a time, but I do think that morally we should think about what are we willing to step into? What are we going to help somebody? I can't just leave somebody laying there and nope the heck out of there. That's, that's something that's so shocking to the conscience of humanity. I don't think I could do that. But you make those decisions for yourself, and I think you should think through them for yourself. You might say, no, I got loved ones in the car that I have to protect or whatever. Okay, fine, but think through that stuff in advance, if you would, friends. And okay, this guy's a robber. They're, they're still looking for him, apparently, but uh, again, he kicks him again on the way out. Crazy stuff here. Now, last robbery, I want us to pay attention to the hands. You see, you know, I always say the eyes are the windows to the soul, but the hands are the windows to the intent. So we look at their eyes really quickly, then we look at right hand, left hand, waist. And that's where we look initially. And you see in his left hand, he's got something in his left hand. Let's see what that is. And then, then take appropriate action from there. Now, the other big thing here is if you've ever done any work with them, that a stun gun is not a taser. It's not going to give you neuromuscular incapacitation. If you've actually trained with a shock knife or something like that, set up real high, what you know is that it makes a big sound that that uh, you know gun does, that, that uh, stun gun, but it's really not that bad. It hurts for sure but it's not deadly. It's not gonna, gonna do you any injury. And so you can fight back against somebody with one of these pretty effectively if you have the skill to do so. So the other part of that is this rising to the level of deadly force. Probably not in my opinion, because it's very unlikely to do death or great bodily harm unless he were to try to, you know, like, like stick it in your face or something like that. If you go, well, no, he's going to stick it in my face. Now that's going to get me in the eyes and that could, you know, ruin my eyesight or something like that. That's more likely to do that. But what he's doing here, sticking him in the body on the arms and stuff like that, probably not. The other thing here, you see him trying to kind of swat it away and those things, much harder to take something away from somebody than you think, especially if you go after it with half measures. So be sure if you go, Go hard and go all the way. If you choose not to, just comply fully. These three robberies, I think, teach us a lot of lessons on a lot of levels about having our empty-handed skill set high, about the purpose of compliance and using it well, about having an understanding of the different tools and knowing when the right time to go is to cover our ass.